You may have seen our spooky VFX fireplace posted around Halloween, and you may want to make your own. My name is Jason Johnston. I'm a VFX director here at Beyond Effects, and for today's level up, I'm going to show you how I achieved that. Let's dive in. So this fireplace consists of several different fire sims that were created in Embergen. This is what they look like out of Embergen. So I have like a, a single flame and then I have like a fire wall here. So I'm going to use these elements. I wanted to kind of create a base foundation of fire coming off the logs. So I've taken that a wall of fire. I've recolored it and changed the density in some areas and the speed. And I've placed it along the log here and here. So I kind of angle it with the log, but not fully, because um, you still want to feel like it's rising correctly with the world. And I put another one here. And this is the same sim, but it is um, less dense, a little bit faster. And you can get a lot of mileage out of using the same sim. Um, then I've added a little bit here and here to put some fire at the base. So now we've got our flame wall in here giving us an, a kind of like a good buildup of fire across the board. So now I'm going to go over the elements in this sim here. This sim kind of gives us more the variation in the fire and the licks that are coming up along with the smoke. If I turn off all of these elements, we'll just kind of go uh, one by one here. So this one element is using that one single fire flame that I showed previously. And I'm emitting it with different speeds and different densities. I'm also scaling the sprite as it gets older and also having it rise as well and giving a little bit of curl noise so that you get variation. Then I've got these smaller versions that kind of hug closer to the base of the fire. They don't really rise up too much and they're a lot uh, denser. This smoke is filling out the, the space above. This is a smoke sim done from Embergen as well. And I just have it uh, rising. It's one sprite that's been you know randomly rotated, randomly scaled, um, different forces applied to it to give that variation. And then because this is for a cinematic, um, I have added lights in here that are being emitted through the, um, the particle system. Because it is a cinematic, I chose to go with the more expensive uh, route. Rather than using the light render, I am using the point light component render. And what that does is it allows us to get actual shadows. So you can get a lot of cool shadow play down here in the fireplace as the lights are moving through it. Basically, I duplicated one of the flames because it already had the motion that I wanted. And I switched it over to the point light component render. So for the skull fire, I took the skull into Houdini and I modeled basically a mesh that wraps around the skull. And so then what I did was I changed the UVs so that they're flowing upwards. And then I'm using uh, one of those walls of fire. This is what this element looks like. And um, I'm emitting it with different um, UV offsets so that you get different parts of the fire um, being shown to the, you know, the direction we're looking at the skull. I've added more lights here, the same kind of thing. So you get the, the same lights underneath. And then I wanted some other green licks like coming up a little to add a little bit more variation. So I've added these guys here. And again, that's using the same sim from the, the purple fire. And so all together, that looks like this. So if we look at the embers, there's a few different emitters. One is just a particle system. It is emitting from the logs. And I'm giving curl noise in the initial forces so that they come out with a low frequency curl noise which is allowing them to kind of shoot out in different directions the way that popping embers would. From there I give an acceleration force to make them uh, rise upwards. A little bit of drag and a couple different curl noises with different frequencies to really complete the look. I also have ones that just rise. They don't really pop out as much. They just rise really fast because um, having both of these together creates a nice variation. 
and then I'm adding um, light in there. I separate the light particles out from the two particle systems so that I can have a lot less of them. And so altogether they look like this. One thing I like to do is I like to flicker the alpha so that it feels like the embers are changing their brightness throughout their life. I also like to, as they get older, rather than scaling them down, I like to scale them up. And what that does is that it allows the bloom in the, like this is happening like 0.6 of their life, so they get bigger right before they die. So it feels like you get this little flash of the ember right before it dies out. And that allows the bloom to take over and you get this nice little sparkle effect that I thought was really nice. Next we have the green embers coming off the skull. It's basically a duplicate of the original system creating the embers, but now they're emitting off of the skull rather than from the logs. Putting final touches on it, if we go here into the lighting and we open up the post process, a few things that I've done here. Again, this is for a cinematic, so I've changed the, the bloom to convolution, which is a little more expensive, but it gives us that nice um, starry effect when it blooms out. I'm manually setting the exposure. I've turned on a dirt mask so that it feels like um, there's a little bit of dirt on the lens. I'm adding a little bit of a lens flare when things get bright enough, and I'm adding a little bit of a vignette here. So if we uh, turn all of that back on, this is the effect we are left with. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more breakdowns and tutorials like this.